Hi, John Scullin with Demir's Ambulances here again. Today we're going to talk about the MX-152 Demir's Type 3 vehicle, and it is mounted on a Sprinter cutaway chassis, which is manufactured by Mercedes. If you don't know a lot about the Mercedes Sprinter, we're going to get into a few of the details and advantages of the Mercedes platform. Most people know that the General Motors 3500 and 4500 G series are no longer going to have a diesel after model year 2016. So we have customers inquiring about the Mercedes, its fuel efficiencies, etc. The Mercedes 3500 cutaway is powered by a three liter, six cylinder, 100 nor 188 horsepower diesel engine. It has 325 foot pounds of torque, so plenty of power. As you know, it's not always necessarily just about the horsepower, it's about the torque. And uh, from personal experience, I can tell you it has plenty of power, no matter what type of terrain you're on, uh, no matter what kind of environment you're in, urban or rural, you will have plenty of power with this chassis. So it is a, a traditional cutaway, which means we receive the chassis and the frame, and we manufacture the box. On the Mercedes efficiencies, the reason customers go with this platform is fuel efficiency mainly. Uh, I believe most of the Type 3 cutaways, whether they're Ford, uh, General Motors, diesel, gas, you'll hear mileages ranging anywhere from 6 miles of the gallon to 10 or 12 miles of the gallon. Uh, we hear everything from 13 to 17 miles per gallon on the Mercedes cutaway, but the bottom line is it's definitely a much more efficient vehicle. Burns a lot less def fluid even when idling. The diesel exhaust fluid consumption is much lower than the traditional chassis, so that's another advantage. Now, we have customers that are running these vehicles three to 400,000 miles without any significant mechanical issues, and uh, of course, normal repairs and maintenance are required. The Mercedes recommendation for an oil change is 10,000 miles, not 5,000, so you can get a little more life out of your oil. Saves you a little money there. We've heard reports of people getting up to 40,000 miles on front brakes on an ambulance chassis, and that's practically unheard of in the past. But if you can take a chassis like this and run 40,000 miles for brakes and 10,000 for oil changes, uh, the total cost of ownership goes way down, and uh, that's why we see a lot of people switch to this. The MX-152 is equipped with the Demir's aerodynamic riser or roof cap. People call it by different names. Uh, what it means to you is we designed it for aerodynamics of the vehicle. It helps with that fuel efficiencies, saves you anywhere from 8 to 14 percent on your fuel mileage. So if you use a round number like 10, for every thousand gallons of fuel that you burn, we're going to give you 100 gallons of that fuel back at uh, 3 4 dollars in your pocket. Again, pointing to total cost of ownership and why people really like the Mercedes chassis. The roof cap was designed for aerodynamics, for uh, aesthetics on the vehicle, but as you can see by the number of lights in it, it's also given us an advantage to be able to adding more lights to the truck, uh, using the roof space more effectively. You don't have the tin canning or the oil canning sound from the roof, and it just gives you better performance when you cut through the wind or when you get side crosswinds. Another big advantage of this chassis is the uh, lean back, the recline room, the multi-position adjustable seats that Mercedes provides. You have lumbar support, uh, you have different elevations for the back. The customers comment that the seats are very comfortable. Uh, I'm six foot two, as you can see I'm in a comfortable driving position here, and I even have more room to go back. The seat is almost infinitely adjustable from lowering you away down and away from the wheel for larger people, or you can actually come up and in for anyone that might be shorter or smaller framed for them to be able to see over the dash. And quite a bit of adjustment here. And then you also have a tilt and telescoping wheel. So we get a lot of comments on the ergonomics of the Mercedes chassis and all the room that people have to, uh, to get in here and adjust it to their liking. It's also equipped with the standard Demir's heads up console, which moves the lighting controls the siren, your driver indications, and your multiplex panel with your temperature, engine hour meter, and other information center, all up into the reach of the driver without having to look down at the floor. Uh, if you have the uh, such items such as the Mercedes backup camera mounted in the dash, this is movable to a console below. But again, we like to, to stress the advantage of our heads-up console. It is angled toward the center of the vehicle so driver and passenger can both operate it while keeping their eyes on the road and having all their controls in easy reach. Now we'll spend a little time talking about the curb side of the vehicle and the features that are available here. Uh, first and foremost, our exterior storage compartment to give you room for all that miscellaneous equipment. Uh, like all of the other Demir's modulars, you'll see that the retention strap is on the door. It's a standard feature on all Demir's. It keeps the uh, people from overextending the doors and breaking the shocks. It keeps the pressure off the actual shock. You have multiple shelves for miscellaneous equipment storage. 
a specially designed section for a stair chair here. Any of the stair chairs that are on the market, motorized, tracked, we've allowed enough room for those to slide in here. Essentially behind the passenger seat, but still allowing seat recline and having that cab extension we discussed on the interior. And then a miscellaneous tool or flare storage compartment at the bottom, about anything you'd want to put in there. You'll also notice we have the dual door gaskets, which translates across the entire Demir's product line, all of the modular ambulances that Demir's makes have dual door gaskets that keeps the uh, moisture and the dust out and gives you a nice smooth door close with a good seal. The curbside entry door on the Demir's MX152 Type 3 Sprinter Modular has a pretty unique feature. It's our fold-out step. The step is operated by uh, mechanics only, no pneumatics, no hydraulics. It's a mechanical arm that allows the step to fold out for easy entry into the vehicle. So I'll go ahead and open the curbside door and you'll see how that step functions. Step comes out mechanically, settles in the perfect position. You'll notice that the scene lights obviously activated as soon as I open the door. We can reach over here and tap the door pin once to deactivate those scene lights. Kind of nice when the summer months uh, in the outdoor area, the bugs will come flying into the vehicle so you can tap that to uh, kill the light. You see the step folds down, it's an easily cleanable step well. As you close the door, it operates just as smoothly on that mechanical arm. Again, no pneumatics, no hydraulics door opens and closes seamlessly. It's a nice low step for entering and exiting the vehicle. It's designed for ergonomics and strength. Like all the other features of the Demirs that uh, we manufacture, you have a five year, 180,000 mile warranty on that step. And uh, I'm not a small guy. You can see the strength that's built into that step. And uh, we find it to be one of our most popular features on the MX-152. Storage areas and module size, we're gonna talk about here from the rear. So the module is 152 inches long, 83 inches wide. Those are the exterior dimensions. And then interior, you have 72 inches of headroom, which is again, standard on all of the Demir's modulars. And the back of the MX-152 does look a little bit different than some of our others because of the limited width of the module when you build on the Sprinter chassis. We've incorporated backboard compartments that slide in horizontally behind the cabinetry. It's nice because it does keep those backboards warm in the wintertime. It's also your attendants will be able to pull the backboards out of the rear of the vehicle without standing on either the shoulder or the highway side trying to get the equipment out. So uh, recessed backboards have been very popular. Here you have it will be traditionally described as an ALS area, whether you're ALS or BLS. This is for your quick response or first in bags, cardiac monitor, items of that nature, whatever your department carries. The nice thing about the MX-152, you have all that equipment right here at the back of the vehicle. So when you get on the scene, you can open the doors, the stretchers here, easily move all your equipment over ergonomically this is a very easy shelf to reach and of course you have a lower section to set maybe your uh, first response bag which tends to be a little bit heavier put it right on the stretcher and take it out it's a very convenient feature you can see all the shelves are equipped with seat belts to hold the equipment in place then when you go into transport mode this shelf even has a 110 outlet on it to charge your cardiac monitor you just use to plug it in so you have a power availability back here for whatever you want to charge on that shelf on the go you have two seating options for the curbside of the MX-152. Your more traditional squad bench is available, which would have two seats here. This is our mobility track system that we've highlighted in some of our other videos. It's a, uh, a safer alternative, so you can do forward facing, you can do 45 degrees or 90 degrees. You have full travel of the patient from the feet to the head. You will see later in this video uh, operations of the seat with a cot in place. Uh, we do often have people say, uh, the seat looks really great. How well does it work once the cot's in there? Of course, it depends on the size of the attendant, but you'll see in those videos, uh, I can still move around in this seat and uh, take care of my patient quite easily, even at my height. So uh, several controls on this seat. Uh, this has become a very popular option because it has the ability to pivot forward on a smaller base. The first control is the mobility track. It will move from the head to the foot of the patient giving you easy access. The second control is the seat rotation. So we can rotate the seat to a forward facing position so we can transport still having access to the patient. Uh, and of course, during treatment time, the 45 degree is a, a very comfortable position to sit in. I'm at 45 degrees. I have the mobility track latch. I can move back and forth to reach every single part of the patient. Then when I go transporting, go back to that forward facing. So with the mobility track, you get a console at the end of the squad bench. Console contains a kick out sharps and or trash, whatever you might want put in there. 
we can cut the opening to match for what your needs are. A work surface area, so you have a place to set your IV supplies when you're starting your line. You also get a 3,000 pound pull tested safety net for attendant safety. Have something to hold on to when you're moving around back here when the vehicle's stationary. And then you also have lighting controls, suction control, uh, a 12 volt outlet, and a multiplex control which does temperature, fan settings, uh, anything else that you might need to access while you're back here working in the back of the vehicle, along with an oxygen outlet and glove box storage. There's also a cabinet available in this area. Uh, just talk to your sales representative about what your particular need is for the layout. Just a few of the other features inside the MX-152. You can see you have an abundance of cabinet space, uh, more storage than you'll probably ever need. We want to make sure you have everything accessible to your attendants. Many of, it, many of these cabinets can be reached from a seated position. Try to keep your attendants sitting down. That's always our goal here at Demir's. We're all about safety and ergonomics. You'll see the ducted AC that travels down the entire length of the vehicle. So when your AC is discharged with separate plenums and separate ducts all the way back, you have equal pressure and temperature at the front and the back of the vehicle. The stainless steel portion of the wall there at the bottom, behind that is where our heating sits. As I showed you at the top, the AC is ducted, even temperature and uh, pressure all the way down the vehicle. Same thing at the bottom. The heat is discharged from behind the wall. It travels the entire length of the vehicle and it rolls out here under this lip. It's, the heat comes out under the cot, warms the patient, and the air travels up like it should. Adjustable shelves with adjustable dividers are standard. You get one shelf per compartment. If you need more, you can contact your sales representative about that. You can see the size of the uh, cabinet frame is just like the extruded wall that we pull test. So it's a solid closing aluminum door structure. You'll also notice that the cabinets are stamped with DOT1004. Uh, that is shatterproof Lexan. We do not use plexiglass at Demir's. Uh, we believe in for safety's sake, we don't want you to have plexiglass anywhere in the back of the vehicle. So anything that you see that's clear plastic or smoked plastic in the back of our modulars and our Type 2s is all Lexan. That's the only way we do it. So in conclusion, if your department is looking for a modular ambulance with plenty of storage space, good ergonomics, a lot of standard base features like LED lighting, LED cabinet lighting, with fuel efficiency, low maintenance, and a low total cost of ownership. I believe the Demir's MX-152 on the Sprinter Cutaway module is an excellent choice.